Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing somatic symptoms and related disorders. And if you guys don't already know, on our YouTube channel, we have a playlist for the USMLE Step 1 Psychiatry videos. There you can find every video you need to know for uh, the Step 1 Psych portion. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel when you guys get a chance. If you guys like what we're doing, post videos every single day. And with that being said, let's talk about general information. In these types of disorders, these somatic and related disorders, the main thing to understand is that physical symptoms are going to be present due to an unknown cause and usually these physical symptoms lead to mental distress. Okay, That's one of the main key giveaways of a somatic disorder that's happening. Now historically these have been called hysteria or uh, som somatization, somatization, however you want to pronounce it. That's usually what it's historically known as as, but one thing to understand is that the symptoms are going to be unintentional, okay, and the motivation itself is also going to be unconscious. Rem uh, remember when we talked about our previous, uh, sorry, and remember in our previous video we talked about malingering and, uh, uh, and fa a factitious disorder? Well, in those cases, in malingering, the symptoms were intentional and motivation was conscious. In uh, factitious disorder, the symptoms were still intentional, but the motivation was unconscious. And in this case, both symptoms and motivation are un unintentional and unconscious. That's very important to understand because that is one key uh, uh, difference between malingering, factitious disorder, and somatic uh, symptoms and somatic disorders as, as well. Okay, so when it comes to epidemiology, all of these uh, disorders that we're going to be talking about today are more prevalent in females than they are in males. So that's one key uh, important epidemiology fact you need to know. It's more uh, prevalent in the less educated and lower socioeconomic class, as well as ethnic minorities. That's another thing. So there are four main disorders that we're going to be discussing today, and they are the somatic symptom disorder, pain disorder, illness anxiety disorder, and conversion disorder. So with that being said, let's first start talking about somatic symptom disorder, probably the most important one you need to know out of all four of these. In this disorder, one or more physical symptoms uh, are present that cause significant distress in a patient's life. That's very important. And when it comes to the physical exam, everything is going to be negative. So you have a patient who presents with pain or maybe nausea or vomiting, constant recurring uh, symptoms, physical symptoms. But when you do the physical exam, when you get a history, nothing really adds up. You don't have... A a clear indication that something is causing these symptoms. At that point, if there's a history of this recurrent symptoms uh, occurring without any cause, you can start thinking about somatic symptom disorder. Now, this may lead to dysfunctional thoughts, feelings, etc., etc., and behavior. And eventually, if this uh, uh, happens for a long enough period, this can lead to MDD, major depressive disorder, just like you know depression in general, and that can also progress to suicide. So often in the USMLA Step 1 vignettes, you may have a patient who presents with some symptoms that have been occurring for a long time. They may be contemplating suicide, maybe they're suicidal, and uh, that should be a key giveaway for somatic symptom disorder. Now, this can also occur with a medical illness that's happening. So for example, if someone is suffering from diabetes type 2, or maybe they're hypothyroid, uh, they can have these disorders at the same time. But one thing to understand is that this medical illness is not indicative of the physical symptoms that they may be feeling. So because they have diabetes, that doesn't mean they should be having back pain. And if a patient presents with chronic back pain, but it's not linked to, you know, hypothyroid or their diabetes, we start considering that as somatic symptom disorder. Not just back pain, but in general, any physical symptom that's being present. Now, this dysfunction has to be present for at least six months. So once it's present for six months, you can start to consider it as somatic symptom disorder. And the treatment is very simple. You want to have recurrent office visits for with the same physician along with, sorry, this should be written as with, not why, along with psychotherapy. The reason why is a lot of times these patients will be saying, hey, I have back pain or I have this physical symptom, but there's no cause. And a doctor might consider that lingering. Maybe they're afraid that this patient wants opioids or maybe that doctor is old school and thinks, oh, this patient is just hysterical, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the cause may be, this turns the patient away from the medical system and actually getting medical therapy that might be beneficial to them. So what you want to do is have regular office visits with the same physician so they can have regularity in their life and have someone who they know that cares about them along with psychotherapy, which could be, you know, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, or an SSRI drug, 
or other types other types of psychotherapy uh, in order to help this patient progress with their symptoms. Now that also will be present uh, present in the vignette for step one. They will just ask you, you know, they'll present somatic symptom. They'll ask you what's the best course of treatment. They'll say SSRIs. They'll say MAOIs. They'll maybe say benzodiazepines. Uh, but the right treatment is going to be regular office visits with the same physician. Okay, that is somatic symptom disorder in a nutshell. So the next next disorder is pain disorder, in which you have uh, a patient who is uh, has chronic pain. That is one key important thing to understand. It's characterized by pain disorder, as the name states. And the pain usually causes significant distress and impairment, as you may know. But one key giveaway is that psychologic factors or psychologic uh, effects actually influence the experience of the pain. That's very important. If they're depressed, they may start feeling pain all of a sudden. That clues you into pain disorder rather than somatic symptom disorder because at at certain extent, at a certain level, you can attribute the pain to something, right? It may not be attributable directly to a, a physical cause, but a psychologic factor leads to the pain. And that's what pain disorder is. Next, we have illness anxiety disorder. I think this is one of my favorite ones just because it's kind of fun uh, to talk about. Illness anxiety disorder is also known as hypochondriasis, a.k.a. you're going to be dealing with patients who are hypochondriacs. Now, you probably are familiar with the word hypochondriac, but if you guys don't know, hypochondriacs are patients who have excessive care and worry about having or acquiring a serious illness. And this illness can be real, it can be made up, whatever it may be, but what ends up happening is that these patients have severe dysfunction as well as maladaptive behavior that's associated with their health. So they may uh, constantly show up to your clinic for visits. They may want you to evaluate them all the time and say, hey, is this right? Is this right? Am I getting cancer? And this can even lead to them avoiding certain uh, behaviors. But one key thing to understand is there are very minimal, minimal somatic symptoms, aka no physical uh manifestations okay so no physical findings are present usually sometimes it may be but usually there's very minimal physical symptoms but one thing to understand like I said earlier is these patients are preoccupied with their illness just like I said with excessive care and uh, this also must be present for at least six months to be classified as illness anxiety disorder boom six months remember timelines are very important when it comes to psychiatry now finally The very last disorder we're going to talk about today is conversion disorder, also known as functional neurologic symptom disorder. In this disorder, a patient will suffer loss of sensory or motor function without it affecting their day-to-day function. And we're going to talk about this portion in a second because I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying, like, what the hell are you saying? How does that not affect uh, day-to-day function? Um, So this sensory motor function loss could be paralysis, it could be blindness, mutism, and seizures, and it often follows an acute stress, okay, or an acute stressor that occurred, right? It could be work, it could be family related, it could just be a physical, you know, event that also occurred, maybe an abuse. So, all after this acute stressor, they end up losing sensory or motor function. Now, I wrote here without it affecting day to day function, and the reason why, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are con- you know concerned about this, why uh, does this happen? Well, the reason why is because of a phenomenon called label indifference. Label indifference pretty much means that this patient, the patients who have conversion disorder, are indifferent to the loss of the the sensory and motor function. They just don't care. They probably know what's happening, right? Like if you're paralyzed, you know you're paralyzed, but they're just like, okay, that's fine. Let's just move on, right? If they go blind, okay, that's fine. Let's move on. So this is uh, why I wrote without affecting their day-to-day functioning. Of course, it affects them to a certain level, but the key giveaway in this case, or the key, uh, um, the key connection I'm trying to make is label indifference. So on a vignette, you may have a patient who presents with severe motor or sensory deficits. Maybe they can't walk, maybe they're paralyzed, or maybe they've gone blind. And uh, a caregiver or a family member brings them in and says, "Hey, look, you know, he can't see from his left eye, he can't see straight, or he can't walk." But he doesn't care. He doesn't seem to care. He just wants to continue on with what he's doing. What's happening, doc? And the answer is going to be conversion 
disorder. Now, with that being said, we've discussed the four somatic and related disorders. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys uh, like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Again, we're posting new Step 1 videos every single day. And if you guys don't know, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. So just type in Mad Medicine and you can uh, find us find us on podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc., etc. Thank you so much for watching and go ahead and continue on to the next video.